thankful that everyone is here. Hopefully everyone had a good day. Um, my name is Zaitara Omasameros, and I'm going to talk to you tonight about digital craft businesses that you can start where you are right now. So the first thing to, to know is that digital craft businesses is an integral part of digital media. All the things that you see online have elements of digital craft in them. Things such as logos, um, templates that you see, but these eight types of things that you can do are very easy to start from where you are right now with the knowledge that you have. There are so many resources online. At the end of the presentation, there's a list of some of the resources that you can depend upon to get good information as well as sell your work. So we're gonna go through these eight different categories. I'm going to explain to you as much as I can in this hour, the importance of this particular um, crafting types of businesses, because first of all, people of color are highly underrepresented in digital media. Usually you'll go online and you will see a lot of different images, but very few of them really reflect our culture and our heritage, the things that we're interested in. So the first thing to do is to think about it from the point of what can you do? So I'm going to go into slideshow mode now. So you can see it a little bit better. So as you see here, the different types of things that you can do from where you are right now, you can be a talent manager, you can manage an artist, a graphic artist, a photographer, a writer. You can also be their agent and promote them. A graphic designer can work on their own or in a group of people when they have large projects. Writers and editors are in high demand as well as photographers, motion graphic artists, music producers and logo designers. So we're gonna look first at the written word because text is really the foundation that everything revolves around online. The second thing we'll look at is graphic arts and photography. We'll look at motion graphics and music. Finally, we'll look at promotion and management and the resources. Okay. Just to let you know, digital media is huge and it's been growing. This chart shows you over the last few years how it has steadily continued to earn more and more revenue. And while they break this down in video games, video on demand and e-publishing, things like e-books, e-magazines, the real thing that we're talking about are all the elements that go into making these things entertaining, informative, and educational. So as you can see here, digital media between 2020, this year made $63 million, is expected to grow in the next year, in 2021, to 60, $67 million. And digital crafts is a huge part of that. As you see, it's gonna to continue to grow till 2025, it's going to be 78 million dollars. And this is just these four categories. There's a whole lot more to digital media. So what are these elements that I'm talking about? All of these examples here are some of the things that individuals have to create. They don't create themselves. Things like special fonts, things like patterns, the 3D objects that you're seeing online, decorative borders, the icons that you see, whether they're social media icons or icons that depict certain types of things on a website or on social media, photos, everything from food to landscape to children to abstracts, you name it, it's online. These are the type of things that you can do very easily. Some of them require skills, but a lot of the tools that you need 
are available online, as opposed to 10 years ago where you had to go buy everything. Now there are so many services online that can help you produce these things. It's really amazing. So let's start with the written word. Just to give you an example, because a lot of times we see things and we really don't take in what we're really seeing. We see this, for instance, this is a blog post. So we see a picture there, we see some type, okay? But think about it this way, that image had to be created by someone, a photographer. The special font for Serenity, the title line in the blog post, that had to be created by someone, as did the font that is underneath there, the copy that's underneath there. Then someone had to compose and edit this copy. So right away, now you've got three people that are involved in this process. And then when you add on the layout artist, that makes four. So the businesses that are involved here, the photographer, you have the type designer, and you have the content writer, and of course, the layout artist. So now let's take a look at this from a different perspective. Here's the same blog post with animation. So now you see the difference that movement brings to this particular blog post. It's much more engaging. There are other photos besides just that one. And again, now you, on top of the other four people, now you have the animator, the video animator, who had to take a role in making this happen. So there's a lot of people involved in the simplest things that you see online, but a lot of times these are the hidden opportunities that no one talks about. They talk about making videos, they talk about you know photography shoots, but it's these elements that go into each ad, social media website, Wikipedia, these are the things that don't get talked about enough. Okay. So what can you do as a writer or an editor? Text and pictures delivers a stylish information. They give flair to it. They make it more interesting. Some of the ways that writers and editors make their living by using different markets, different avenues. Uh, I'm sorry, entrepreneurs use them, agencies use them, website owners use them. The market is tremendous. You can be a ghostwriter to help an author get their book onto market. And then there are things like closed captioning for videos. People don't always realize there's people that that's their job 24 seven, they do that. Also, there's things like translation. But the major thing here is that all of these um, avenues for income are under pressure now more than ever to become much more inclusive. When I started doing uh, graphic design way back in the last century, it was almost impossible to find stock photography of anyone that looked like me. It was almost impossible. Even today, 20 years later, when I go online and I go to stock photography um, outlets such as Adobe Stock or Shutterstock, I have to search for hours sometimes to find images that are appropriate for my audience. So it's the same thing when it comes to writing. There's a lot of literature online, there are a lot of articles, but a lot of times they're not written in a way that resonate with a particular audience. So the market for digital craft is really wide open now. It's a really great opportunity, a great time to get into the field. Whether you go through social media, you go the traditional route, magazines and books, or you work with a video producer, there's tons of ways to make money as a writer. So now let's look at graphic arts and photography. This is the header of a template. And I just want to show you beside the obvious things that we're, we're accustomed to thinking about, such as the menu at the top, there's these elements that are in effect. On the upper left-hand corner, we have the logo. Now this is a very simple logo, but nonetheless, it's a logo and someone had to create that. On the upper right, 
beside the menu and the add listings button, you have two icons, the search button and the shopping cart. And these are pretty standard web elements. But at the bottom, where you see the icons for nightlife, fitness, beauty, shopping, traveling, and restaurants, those are not so common. And again, someone had to actually sit down and design these things. They do not come ready-made on the computer that you just press a button and you have them. Although they do have font designers that deal with these type of things as well. Overall, you have now a picture behind this, all of these graphics here. That's a photographer's job. And again, you have the programmer, of course, that's making this website function for the menu, for the search bar, all of that. But those are the, the, um, the careers that everyone is talking about. Become a programmer, learn how to code. But there's much more to making the internet work than just simply coding. So you have the background patterns. Uh, I apologize, this, I did not design this particular template. I would have chosen a different background. But if you can see that there is a very, very faint pattern design on the background and that also someone had to create that as well. In the next slide here, what you're looking at is actual website, each page of the website. This is a complete template. People who design templates have to work together. One person cannot do everything that's involved with designing a template. Template design is a very lucrative business because it is very time consuming to create everything from scratch. So this is why templates are such a great business to go into because the media is constantly changing. People want to see new things. So every six months to a year, you change your website design. And if you were to do this all from scratch, from programming, you know, doing the layout, getting, you know, taking all the photographs, designing all the icons, writing all the content, you would never get it done. So usually when it comes to template design, this is a collaborative thing. And I always encourage graphic artists and photographers, you know, designers to work together because as a group, you can get larger contracts and make more money. So the same thing holds true for graphic art and photography as far as how they can sell their work, what's in demand. You have demand for special visual effects, even in print. A lot of the things that you see online are also translated into print, brochures, magazines, pamphlets, etc. A lot of things you'll see online, you download as and you can make hard copy. So these are the avenues that you have available with this particular uh, approach to the marketplace, as opposed to going after, you know, following the crowd and doing what everyone else is doing. Not that there's anything wrong with coding, but at the same time, not everyone is a coder. Some people are a lot more creative in illustration. For instance, putting together graphic design illustrations. A lot of people are much more comfortable doing that than sitting, figuring out a mathematical formula. You can also reach out to businesses such as real estate companies. Real estate companies are always looking for good photographers, good videographers. They have 3D uh, real estate tours now. So this is a huge market and digital crafts fits right in there. So now you look at still photography and the traditional look at video, but there's a different side to video that also a lot of people are not very familiar with and that's called motion graphics. Motion graphics is a lot more experimental than regular video. I'm going to play this video and let you take a look so you'll get a chance to see what I'm talking about.
Okay. So the idea here is you get a chance to see all the things that I discussed earlier about text, about photo, about special effects, about the different icons. All of these get brought into play with motion graphics and then special effects are layered on top of that and music is involved. Now that's not necessarily music like the music you hear on the radio. These are different tracks that are put together by musicians. As you see, this uh, particular video was not very long. It was a total of two minutes for all three of those videos. But the point being that here you have another collaborative effort. You have a musician, you have a special effects person, you have a photographer, you have a videographer, you have a writer, you have icons, you have different fonts. So again, these are the elements that are going into making digital media so exciting. So with motion graphics, the outlets decide the type of things that we just saw for promotion are also things like digital signage. Um, this has become very popular in the last couple of years. It's not just used in terms of like airports or you know, travel services, but they're also being used outside in retail operations, as opposed to just having a mannequin in the window. They're now putting digital signage where people are actually watching a fashion show that's been recorded. And this is tremendously popular. The other thing that um, motion graphics is very good for is when people want to explain their product or their service. I'm sure you've seen them. They come in cartoon forms. They come in realistic doodling forms. So these are all part of what a motion graphic artist does. And the music that's behind these different types of um, elements that are created are also created by individual people. So it's not something that you can just go and you can just get. These are people that are sitting there at their computers, on their mobile phones, and they are creating these things in real time. So this is a high demand market. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of sites where these things are sold, where artists are making money so that you get a chance to see for yourself that there's a huge opportunity out there. So the last part of this is promotion and management. And I've often asked, well, what's the difference? Aren't they the same thing? Technically, no. In graphic arts, it's not the same thing. A promoter is your agent. They're the person that gets the word out about your, your talent. They may have your portfolio. They may talk to different people about giving you opportunities to sell your work or display your work, do shows for you, et cetera. Now, a manager, on the other hand, is the person that's literally behind the scenes. And a good manager is the person that will take care of the details for you so that you can focus on your work. I always caution artists about trying to do everything, trying to market their work, produce their work, manage their affairs, it, it can get extremely complicated. Um, this is a very fast moving industry. The time online compared to time on the ground is three times as fast. And I'm being very, very modest when I say three times. So the, the rate of change that uh, a brick and mortar retail store will experience, let's say they change their display once a month, an online retailer may change their, their display twice a month. So it's a completely different way of looking at how life works when it comes to digital media. Your manager is more of the administrator. They're making sure that all of your ducks are in a row. They make sure that all of your uh, support team because your manager is not your accountant. Your manager is not your lawyer. What they do is they act like the team leader and they help to coordinate everything. A good promoter is the person, they're your number one fans. They cannot say enough good stuff about you. They're networking on your behalf. They're talking about your shows, talking about your reviews and getting you inroads because the better well you're known, 
the more work you're going to get. So in promotion and management, artist representation, when it comes to an agent, they go after the trade specific publications, they go after organizational events, conferences, trade marketplaces, they go to agencies on your behalf as well. Both managers and agents can work from contracts and a commission basis, meaning that you agree on a percentage that they will earn for their efforts if they are successful. Some people go more traditional route with managers and they give them like a, a flat retainer and then a specific fee. But most of the time, particularly with talent, artist talent, there's a commission basis. Managers, on the other hand, as I said, they take care of your legal status of operations. They make sure that you know your taxes are done on time. They make sure that your lawyers get your contract and agreements. They take care of your schedule so there's no conflicts. And most importantly, they help you with project planning because particularly when you're dealing with a large project with lots of people, it can become completely crazed particularly you're working under a deadline, you've got to get certain things done. This is when your manager is really invaluable. So I want to see if I can come out of this for a second and take you to some of these websites. Okay, so here's this first one. This is a really good subscription service. I use this service and it's part of the larger Envato family. Envato is a huge creative group. They deal with everything that we've talked about. Here you get a chance to you pay one flat fee for the year and you get to download all kinds of things. For instance, let me just look at the menu here. All right, let's go to stock video. The stock video, uh, as you can Hopefully, if we will, let's say a cat. All right. So this is how it works. Every one of these stock videos, not right now in Rato, no survey. Every one of these videos that you see here was created by either an individual or a studio a group of people. So uh, this just goes to show you, I typed in cats, okay, and it returned um, almost 3,500 um, examples for us to look at videos. And as you see here, there's a difference they make here between stock footage and motion graphics. So stock footage is your traditional, just plain video, okay, and then motion graphics is what we saw with a lot of extra special effects and you know, music and all kinds of wonderfulness going on. So this is a very good service. Um, I'm gonna take you back to the beginning here. And as you can see here, these are, here's the photography. Um, this, a lot of this stuff comes directly from Envato. Envato has a very healthy artist community. I, you know, I always advise people if they want to sell their work, this is one of the more reputable places you can sell your work. So that's the stock photography and video. Now, when we think about writers, writers have quite a few resources as well. This is one of the better freelancing resources for writers. They help you to get jobs. They help you to learn how to write. You can post your profile here. They have all kinds of informative you know, articles and resources for artists and for writers. Okay, all of these things that I discussed in this particular presentation really do overlap. So you will find the, that a photographer is going to be able to use the same resources as a motion graphic artist. A writer can use the same things as a photographer. It's really a very interesting mix of people. So this is the writer resources. And as I said, there's a whole list of resources at the end. This is a graphic artist resource depot. Lots of good things here as far as like we talked about icons and borders and patterns, images, etc. Again, someone had to create all these things. 
And let me see. Speaking like, of Tara? Yes. Yes. Just, just a moment. Uh, we can't see the other screen. We're still seeing the presentation. Oh, that's not good. So how do I do that? Okay. Uh, click share, uh, new share, okay. and select that screen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Jay. Uh, okay, let's go here. Let me see if we can get this done. Okay, can you see it now? Hello? Yeah, we see it now. The free okay. stock image. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just said something earlier. I've gone through three screens. <laughs> well, let me go back then. Okay, so this is the graphic resource for graphic designers. This has like all kinds of freebies that you can use. Um, and of course, you know, if you can get something for free, that's perfectly okay. You should be aware that when you get things for free, there's always like a catch. Like, you know, you may have to give the artist, the photographer credit on your website. You might have to link back to a site. That's perfectly up to you. This is something you have to decide. Now, Jay, tell me if I, when I switch now, if, you, if I need to do anything else, okay? So I'm going to a different website. Do you see this free digital photography school? Yes, no? Hello? Yeah, we still see it. You can see free digital yes. photography? Yes, okay. we see it. Okay, good. All right, so um, this is uh, one of the things that people always ask me about photography, digital photography, do I have to buy a camera? Well, it, you don't have to buy a camera. You can do a lot of this with your mobile phone. But the trick with the mobile phone is that you have to know how many pixels the camera can hold because some of these photography um, markets, they're very picky about the quality of the photo. The best way to find this out is to go to the manufacturer's website, look for your model and find out what the camera, uh, they call it the megapixel, what the megapixel, megapixel <laughs> count is. Anything above 12, you're usually safe. But again, it depends on what kind of photography you're talking about. If you're talking about doing something, um, you know, like uh, landscapes or what have you, then your digital camera might be limited because a landscape is quite, you know, expansive. So you might not be able to do things on that level. But there are certainly, as you saw from before, or hopefully, let me show you again, there are so many different subjects for you to choose from, animals, people, food, that it really is not um, that difficult to find um, a, a target that's suitable for your camera. Okay, so let's say um, um, birds. All right, is everyone seeing this Envato element screen now? Yes. Hello. Okay. So as you can see here, when you're looking at, now these are just photos of birds. Okay. But again, these are all, you know, they're individual artists. Some of them are studios, photography studios that are producing these, put them online and these are royalty free. Meaning once you pay your subscription fee, then you can use this, you have the license to use the photograph. Now, when you go to more expensive and high end, such as Adobe stock, then you start looking at more serious, um, a more serious kind of, uh, okay, can we please just get the fingers to work here? Thank you. All right, Adobe stock, shutter stock, ready images, these are the high end. Envato creative market pixels, that is the intermediate market. Adobe stock is, uh, has a lot of professional photographers, professional graphic artists that have been doing this for years and years and years. Okay, consequently their license fees are higher than Envato market because the photographers, they have these reputations, et cetera. 
But the main thing for you to keep in mind is the purpose of exposing this market is because of the underrepresentation. It is amazing to me if I type in businesswoman here. That in 2020, this is what I'm seeing. The majority of what I'm seeing. Five years ago, I wouldn't have even seen this amount of women of color here. Okay. We are highly underrepresented in digital media. And that's the reason that I want to do this presentation because we really need more people. We need more diversity and more inclusion in digital media. As more and more people become online, this has become a real problem. So again, if I say here, let me look at this. If I say this is a premium, now premium is even more expensive. So when you're looking to create a project and you have a very small budget, um, even Adobe a subscription gives you 10 stock images, you're still looking at $60 a month. Uh, Invato Market gives you a year of unlimited um, assets for about $200 a year. So it really depends on who your target market is. If you need high-end photography, the other other thing about um, Adobe Stock and Shutterstock is that they're a lot more posed. They're not um, as you know realistic or in real time. A lot of them are staged, and so a lot of people are shying away from that look now. They want a more realistic, true to life look. But for corporations, a lot of times this is the most appropriate way to deal with their photography. So let me go back to um, the presentation. Um, are you able to see my the presentation again? Hello? Not yet. Not okay. yet. Do a, another new screen, sir. Okay. Should be able to back. select. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Share. Okay. Now we should we see it back. now. Okay. All right. So again, that's just to get a, a really very brief overview of what's available out there. I wanted to leave enough time to really go through the resources and to just answer any questions that anyone might have. So just to tie all of this together in a nice bow, uh, the problem with digital media right now, as I said, is underrepresentation. They're just, is they're not, it's not diverse enough, it's not inclusive enough. From an artistic point of view, from an image point of view, uh, we really need to get into the mix. The digital in media industry is growing. It's right now it's at 64 million. It's projected to go up to 75 million within the next five or six years. The highest demand is for ebooks, social media, videos, et cetera. Streaming media, media, media on demand, also very high. Most of the digital craft that we looked at, the tools are low cost, they're online, and there are a lot of apps that can help as well. There are multiple markets, which makes it a lot easier to sell your work now than ever before. Um, there are also lots of inspiration sites so that you can see what's on the market already. You can get ideas what's missing, different angles that you can take as far as creating your work. And of course, as I said, collaboration is the main way to get large contracts. If you get a contract for something like um, a brochure, um, a three a three panel brochure, that's one thing. But if you get a contract for a complete, you know, um, onboarding program that includes video training. This would not, it would not be a wise idea to try to handle all that by yourself. So it's always good for anyone who is creative, who likes to write, likes to take photographs. Most people that I know, they enjoy taking photographs, they enjoy making videos on their phone. 
there's absolutely no reason with the right phone that you cannot make money from your photographs. And if we get a good response to this, then I can come back and I can show you the next level. Once you get into it, once you start creating things, start making money, there's a whole nother level you can take your craft to. Agents get work for you, managers handle your business details. Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to have an, an, an agent and a manager and the same person um, because their heads have to be in two different places. Agents have to be like, you know, social butterflies and they've gotta be, you know, going to the trendy events, to the gallery showings, to events, you know, to what have you. They've got to write press releases. They've got to put together your press kit and things of this nature where your manager has to really have their feet on the ground and look at the bottom line. Are you spending too much time on this particular project? Do you need to work with different people? Um, you know, is this contract going to work in your favor? So to try to have an agent and a manager and the same person, I'm not saying it cannot be done, but it is a little bit difficult to manage to wear both of those hats at the same time. So before I move forward, are there any questions? Anyone have any questions? Okay, so resources. Um, I'm going to um, send this uh, to Jay. Anyone who registered for this will be able to get the hard copy if they would like. Uh, of course, I know the webinar will um, be online as well. Uh, when it comes to written word or writer resources, there, there are so many, I could not begin to list them all. But the most important one is at the top of the list for writers. You absolutely positively need to go to the copyright office and understand how to protect your work. Uh, it's very important whenever you are selling your work for hire that you have a clear clause in your agreement. Make sure you understand what the copyright privilege is. In other words, if you're hired as a writer for Adobe and Adobe says anything that you write for us belongs to us, this should be in the contract. If this is something that you can't you don't want to do, then it's best not to sign the contract. There is no occasion when a contract is not necessary. There are many digital uh, media people that I know, they have gone into serious work projects without a contract and uh, something invariably went wrong. Either they didn't get paid, the client changed the parameters of the project, um, they, you know, decided that uh, three quarters into the project, they weren't going to follow through, they didn't want to complete it. And because they had no contract, they had no recourse. Of course, if you're going to do this as a business, it is always a good idea to talk to an accountant, talk to a lawyer, and find out what is the optimum way for you to structure this business. So, when it comes to copywriting, uh, again, this is something you need to have clear understanding about as a writer, because when you put your, your work out there for sale, when you're freelancing, you're writing for other people, then it, you cannot claim nine times out of 10. Unless they give you a byline, you cannot claim that work as yours. It belongs to them. So it is just as if you never they wrote it themselves. Now, on the other hand, when you create an ebook, you can create an ebook and uh, for yourself. Uh, again, you still need the copyright, but then you get into other things such as ISBN numbers. So the copyright office really is a resource for all of this information. If you are a writer, I see, or you want to think about publishing your book, that is the first place you should go. When you talk about selling your work, all of the general help references that are listed there, literary marketplace, writer's market, all of these places have both 
um, resources, articles that can help you to hone your craft, as well as leads on markets where they're looking for good writers. The list below under sell your work, more strictly dealing with selling your work. The people that are looking to hire writers, the markets that are available, they also have competitions. Uh, it's not just writing articles, there are also poetry, there's also uh, research, there's also technical writing. So it's not just blog posts, it's not just articles that you see on the, tra on the travel agency website. They get into case studies, what they call white papers. This is a very lucrative market for a good writer. Technical writing is very difficult to get into because usually you have to have like three years of technical writing experience. But then there are also places where they ask you to do a review and it's in layman's terms. So it can be a technical subject, but written in layman's terms. So that's also an opportunity. For writers, um, there's a lot of back and forth between freelancing and publishing their own work. So publishing your own work is a very lucrative way to generate passive income. If you write a book, an ebook on something that's um, an information subject that's in demand, this is something you put it on Amazon. I did not go into Kindle publishing this time because we only have an hour. But Kindle publishing is a great way to set up a situation where you publish your work and it creates revenue for you while you sleep. That is one of the best ways to create passive income. For graphic artists and photographers, again, there is no, no lack of resources for both graphic artists and photographers, particularly uh, the fact that photographers are dealing with both the traditional cameras um, in sense of, you know, the DSR, and then you've got the mobile phone camera. So digital photography coming from both of those points of view uh, is very popular. There are courses online, very reasonably priced, that teach you the ins and outs of digital photography with a standard cam digital camera, as well as mobile photography classes, which I highly recommend because there's a lot in the mobile camera that's not the same from camera to camera. So it's important that you get to know the maker of that camera, what's the limitations, what's the advantages, and you can get out there and take as many photos as you like. When you're selling your work, again, it's really important to stay up on the trends of what types of subjects people are looking for when they're looking for photos for their website. Again, the market is wide open because again, people of color are underrepresented. And as more and more people of color start their businesses online, bring them online, they want to see uh, an image that reflects themselves as well as their customers. So this is not to say that you cannot find anything, uh, it just, we need more. Okay. Ocean graphics and music resources. Again, um, I would like to just stress that motion graphics is, is something that is not as um, it's not as popular as video, but it is done particularly. It's used a lot when it needs to uh, bring the attention, immediate attention, in a short period of time. So where a regular video might run three to five minutes. A motion graphic a video is going to run maybe two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes, but it's packed with so much information that it, it just is it just riveting to your attention. So this is the main impact of motion graphics. You will see it used a lot in uh, picture, um, movie trailers, you know, trailers for mo new movies that are coming out. You will see it there. You will see it with certain uh, types of products, particularly fitness products sporting events, they heavy into motion graphic. And of course, music is behind the scenes um, in most of the things that you're seeing in video. 
You're going to hear clips of music, whether they're beats, whether they're tracks, whether they're loops. All of this is part of what the, a whole community of musicians, they spend their time creating. Anything from a door slam sound effect to a, a complete instrumental intro for your video. This is the type of things that are out there. And again, these tools are online, they're on your phone. And so they're very easy to use and a good way to make extra money. So that's the end of the presentation. I thank you for your attention. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Hello. I don't see any questions popping up, but I think that was some great information that you shared with us because that the, um, digital market is something that's really, really been expanding, especially especially lately. So that's something that we, we should all consider as far as uh, expanding our business, expanding our at different opportunities. Well, as I said, this is a, a great time to get involved in this um, in this marketplace, because as I said, the problem here is that a lot of people do not realize what they're really seeing when they go online. I mean, I've, I've, I moved to New Orleans in 2007 and every person that I met when they asked me, well, what do you do? I said, you know, I'm a designer, I work online. They, they looked at me like I was from Pluto. They was like, work online. They, they just, you know, I don't know exactly what their uh, perception was, but I've met people that literally think that, you know, everything is just ready made and, you know, we go online and they have no clue. The, the internet industry employs more than 2 million people between keeping the internet online, between keeping the servers that are hosting every website that you see online, between keeping the website itself functioning, between coding the sites that you see. I mean, it's a huge industry now, but this particular market, the digital crafts market, this is a very easy market to get into. Um, even if you want to approach it from helping artists to sell their wares, like creating a website for like all the artists that you know to submit their stuff. I say you want to start a community. There are plenty of communities, even on Facebook. There's a writer's life community. There's a photographer's community. There's a digital artist community. So this is growing, but unfortunately, People of color, I for whatever their reasons are, they have been um, either they didn't know about these things or they feel that they need special skills. And then as I said, 10 years ago, you did, I mean, uh, 10 years ago, I was paying $1,000 for software for Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. $1,000 for the license. Now, you pay uh, a subscription fee and you know it's affordable for everyone. It starts from like $30 a month. So, you know, it's nice to see how far, you know, the industry has come because uh, I mean, even animation, the video I showed you, that was not possible 15 years ago. That was not possible to do online. So the technology has advanced greatly. Um, I, I mean, this is like my baby. These are the things that, you know, I, I can talk about them in my sleep that because I've been doing it for so long, but I'm always surprised at how few people I meet when I go to conferences or seminars or whatever. I'm, I can literally count on maybe two hands, people that look like me that are doing this stuff. You know, so the, the whole idea here is to get more people having multiple ways to earn income. That's the bottom line. Okay, the underrepresentation is important, but the more avenues we have to earn an income, the better. 
and just to uh, help put it into a, a different perspective, um, even the even the state, some state organizations are are seeing the benefits of having uh, resources to help uh, small business owners uh, jump into uh, entrepreneurs jump into the digital digital world, uh, such as LEDs investing in educational programs in partnership with Shopify. I know you mentioned helping artists sell their wares online. They have educational programs specifically for how to how to set up these websites to help you sell online. So it, it like Tyra said, this is a very lucrative industry. Um, the, and like I said, the state of Louisiana, Louisiana Economic Development, They've even seen it, so this they they're starting to push more uh, resources toward toward this industry for everybody to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole presentation, if you look at it from that perspective, okay, you saw an example of everything that goes into creating a website. But you know, the variations on the theme are just endless. You know, the icons, they're like a gazillion icons that you can use. Backgrounds, patterns. I mean, if I had gone through everything I could have gone through, even if I just chose the Envato site, we would have been here for like six hours. This is just amazing what's available. And again, I have to stress, it is not that difficult, okay? Now is the time. If it was... I'm telling you, when I first got into the field, it was torture. It was literally torture, okay? Now, you had five, five typefaces at one point online, five, that was it. Now there's like a million typefaces, handwriting, scripts, all kinds of things you can do now. There's no reason to have dull content anymore. You don't have to have dull content, you know, just plain text, you know, there's just no excuse for that anymore, especially if you want people to come to your website. Remember that streaming media and social media are the two predominant forces at play right now. So to have people ask me all the time, should I still have a website? Most definitely you should. And there's a lot of reasons why you should. I won't go into that, we're out of time. But the point is that when you create a website, you've got to create the website with a lot of these elements that people are comfortable with, they get accustomed to certain things, they expect certain things on your website. So if you don't have those things on your website, there's no reason for them to stay. So those are the two things you're competing with. You're competing with YouTube and you're competing with Facebook, uh, Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok. That's who you're, you're, you're competing with. Your website is your bedrock. Okay, I don't care how much social media you're on, you should still have a website because the power is behind the internet, grade businesses accordingly. So if you have a business and you're only on social media, this is really working against you. Okay, Google and everybody else, they look at that like, hmm, okay, they really do. So uh, the domain registration process, is uh, in a way a credibility factor in search engine rankings now. So that's all we have time for today. And um, did you record this? I just want to add one. Yes, I did record it. So we'll, okay. we'll be able to share it. And uh, I should be able to get it up on our YouTube channel that's linked to our website. Okay. The other thing I want Okay, that's good. I just want, I didn't see the little red light. So I was like, oh my goodness, I hope he recorded it. <laughs> okay. I wanted to point out is you did mention C's was so important that um, they can, they'll give you a way to make a basic website for free until you're ready to build into a full website. And that's, that just, that just is a testament to how important a website actually is. Now you'll yes. still have to pay for the domain registration and things like that, but they do have a, a Google Sites platform that is a a free website that you can build out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's just it like I said, it's a testament to the need for a website now. 
Yes. They, they removed any excuse that you that you have for not having a weapon. Yes, and and there's um, the other thing I want to just let you know. Um, a lot of people ask me about Wix and and uh, Squarespace and um, you know these other website builders. Um, the the only problem that I see there uh, is that there have been cases where a person has built their website there. Then when they want to take their content uh, and and let's say go to private hosting or whatever, they've run into some difficulties. So whatever, if, if Google is reputable, I don't have a problem with Google, but um, when it comes to the other website builders, the, the only caveat is that they may advertise on your website and they may restrict, they may claim that the content belongs to them because they've given you this free hosting. So this is, you always have to read the fine print, but yeah, I'm aware of Google sites. I think that's wonderful, but this uh, digital crap is this, this is really an opportunity that I am trying to get people to really get a hold of because it's out there. Yes, there's competition out there, but the niche is the is a thing. The fact that you're going after a specific underserved, underrepresented niche, and you know now everyone is uh, very sensitive to inclusion and diversity. There is no better time to let our culture, traditions, and heritage in a positive light be seen, because that's the other problem that I've seen in stock photography is that. Um, it's not um, true to life. A lot of the subject matter is a, a little bit um, offensive in a way, the way it's put together, because they don't have the sensitivity, okay? They don't have the sensitivity. They're, they're shooting a subject that they don't connect with. So it's not, it doesn't come across authentically. So that's the important thing here. I thank you for your help, Jay, tonight. I thank everyone who attended. I'm sorry there weren't more questions, but um, hopefully we will have a good response online. Yeah, we have some comments in there saying that you did a great job. It was very informative. And I think that's why we didn't have many questions because you you covered uh, a good bit and uh, very thoroughly. So. You, uh, the way you explained it, I think, uh, made it clear for everybody what what the possibilities were. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad. So, and uh, do you want me to send you I this? Applaud John. I thank you for sharing. Okay. All the okay. Yes. Thank yes. You. Please do. All right. Okay, I will send you that and you can distribute it to anybody who wants to get it. Thank you. Everybody have a good night. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, Y'all have a great evening and a great night.